morning and welcome to your Los Angeles City Council. Today is Wednesday, March 16, 2016, and we are live streaming on the internet in Channel 35. And uh, with that, I believe that we do have a quorum, Mr. Clerk, if you can please call the roll. Very good, sir. Blumenfield, Bono, Buscaino, Cedillo, Angler, Fuentes, Harris, Dawson, Wieser, Koretsko, Corrine, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson. Ten members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, first order of business, please. Approval of the minutes. Okay, Mr. Buscaino moves, Mr. Fuentes seconds. Next item, please. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Okay, Mr. Huizar moves, Mr. Corret seconds. Next item, please. Mr. President, the Department of Building and Safety recommends that items 1C, I, K, R, V, Z, and A, B be received and filed in as much as the liens have been paid in full. The Department further recommends that items 1G, J, and W be received and filed in as much as the initial liens have been paid in full and the late fees were rescinded by the Department. That item 1AC be reduced to $7,601.59 and that item 1M be continued to March 30th, 2016. Further, there are requests to continue items 2A to June 8, 2016, and item 30 to March 23, 2016. Very well, that'll be the order without objection. Thank you very much. Next items, please. Mr. President, items 1 through 18 are items noticed for public hearing. All right, we'll go ahead and hold those on the desk for public hearings then. Next items, please. Well, which ones do we have cards on? Uh, thus far, we have cards on items one and three, sir. Okay, then let's take the remaining items. Colleagues, do you have any specials on the remaining items? Seeing none, let's go ahead and open the roll on the remaining items. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. All right, those are approved. Next items, please. Items 19 through 25 are items for which public hearings have been held. A committee report for item 21 has been circulated. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, reopen public hearing on item 25 yes, as well. So we'll go ahead and hold that on the desk. <laughs> Mr. O'Farrell. Uh, item 21 special, please. 21 special without objections. That'll be the order. We'll go ahead and hold that on the desk as well. Next items, please. Uh, Mr. President, that leaves a number of items to be voted on. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and open the roll on the remaining items, colleagues. Any no other specials? Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Those items are approved. Okay, next items, please. Items 26 through 45 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, open the roll for consideration on those. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Those items are now before us. Mr. President, we do have cards on items 26, 36, 40, 41, 43, 44, and 45. All right, then the remaining items, colleagues, we'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Thank you very much. Next items. That brings us to items 46 through 50. There are items scheduled for closed session. Would you like to hold them on the desk? Yeah, we'll go ahead and hold the closed session items for now. Thank you. Mr. President, that takes council back to presentations uh, or items called special. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, let's go into item 43 first, called special. By cards, we've got Mr. Previn and Dan. Come on up. Mr. Previn, good morning. I'll take one minute on this, sir, so let's adjust the clock to 60 seconds. My name is Eric Previn, and I'm from CD2. And this is, um, I believe, a couple weeks or months ago, Krikorian pushed through an increase from 500 to, to 1,000, the penalty for uh, any proper uh, identification of somebody doing graffiti by an individual. They get that money, and the guy presumably is caught, and we move forward in some way. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happens. A lot of gangs uh, are using graffiti, so we would like to, cur to curtail that. Can't imagine throwing a graffiti charge against a guy helps much, but 
But this is an interesting use of resources, and uh, I hope it um, somehow – I know people struggle with graffiti. I think we make too much of graffiti, if truth be told. And I think all the plasticization of everything in Metro ought to be scrapped, because in my area, it's just ridiculous. And I think we should focus on some of the substantial problems underneath that. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and hold the other uh, minute for you, Mr. Previn. Mr. Gus. Hi there. Good morning. One minute only, please. I think this is a, um, you know, it's, it's good to have rewards for graffiti, but here's the problem. It's being racially applied. If, if graffiti happens in uh, CD2 on, what is it, cold water, or all of a sudden it's worth a reward. Well, what happens in CD8, for example? Where are the graffiti award increases for CD8? Is it because it's a predominantly Latino and African-American community? No, so, so why are we offering the same elevated amounts for graffiti for CD8, for CD10, for CD14? I am concerned that this is an increase that's being racially applied because in this instance, it takes place in the largely uh, Caucasian community of North Hollywood near the council member's office. So if you're going to do this for the white communities, you need to do it for the Latino communities, the Asian communities, in the black communities, otherwise it is racial, one minute only. Thank you very much. All right, having no other cards, we'll go ahead and open the roll on item 43, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. Great. Item three, uh, called by cards, John Walsh. Is Mr. Walsh in the room? Not here. Okay, we'll go ahead and... Uh, He's not here, so we called the card. We'll go ahead and take item three, open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. Let's go ahead and take item 41, called special by cards. Uh, this was also John Walsh. John, did you want to speak on item 41? John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, or J. Walsh Confidential. Uh, item 41, this is uh, FEMA, Urban Search and Rescue Task Force Cooperative Agreement. Uh, this is a $1 million down the rat hole. We have, there's absolutely no interest in anything as far as uh, uh, disasters. The only disaster that the mayor is worried about is Bernie Sanders as president, okay? That's the only disaster he's worried about. This is $425,000 down the goddamn rat hole. All right, having no other cards on that item, we'll go ahead and open the roll on that item. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes. All right, let's go ahead and turn our attention to presentations. And uh, Mr. Fuentes, are you ready for your special presentation? Fantastic. The floor is yours. Not ready yet. All right, so we'll go ahead and take uh, item 26. Eric Previn, followed by John Walsh. Sure, once again, I'll take 60 seconds, sir. Uh, so, no after play games. Thank you. Um, this is surprising that there's just a couple speakers on this because this is the Great Megillah. This is the one that everybody talks about all the time, where, believe it or not, uh, Board of Water and Power Commissioners um, are authorizing that the City Council take 200 Bloomingfield, 66,957,000, and do as you like. This is always written about every year, and then the City Council adequately and appropriately tries to hide the possibility of blowback. We obviously were celebrating the rate increase that was so responsible, although the Times felt it was too little. 
uh, just a week or so ago. So I bring this to the attention of the listeners on Channel 35 to know that the City Council is once again engaged in taking power revenue money, bringing it over here and deploying it as they see fit, and we'll talk about later in the agenda just how they do that, converting all sorts of straight time to overtime, thanks to you, sir, and other things. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, R.J. Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Now this is, we were told the DWP didn't, ran out of money. There was no money for the DWP. So you had to raise our, our, our rates. Now here, all of a sudden, we find out surplus money? Look at it. Am I lying to you, Mr. Kokorian? They had surplus money here. How much money was it? We don't, they're not going to tell us the money. How much? The surplus money, the transfer of surplus money from the Power Revenue Fund uh, of the DWP to the Reserve Fund. They have so much money that they're tr trading from one place to another. What a bunch of fooey liars you are. And so is Rabbi Haya for Haya. Thank you very much. Um, having no other cards, Mr. Fuentes. Thank you, Mr. Wait, uh, before, before you speak, if we can have the, some of the sidebar conversation over here, if you guys can keep it down just a little bit, Sergeant, if you can ask the Chambers folks to keep their conversations down to a minimum. I want to hear what Mr. Fuentes has to say. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. Uh, so, colleagues, this is the transfer. It was uh, not uh, done its service right now by the public testimony. This transfer has been around since 1925. It is something that the city of Los Angeles, actually it has made the city of Los Angeles really great uh, in that it is our dividend to our ratepayers. The transfer, as you many, many of you know, gets transferred on the previous fiscal year. So what's moving over today is money from fiscal year 2014-15. It does not reflect the increases in revenues in this recent rate case. But the reason we should celebrate all of this, colleagues, is because the transfer, when the research was done recently in the recent uh, analysis on the rate case, the transfer is on par with other municipally owned utilities in the country. In fact, we probably are on the lower end of what it is that we transfer over. But the reason that we ought to celebrate this is that this is precisely why the ratepayers, Angelinos, the city of Los Angeles, owning its own utility, it gets to invest in the city service delivery that we all want and deserve. So as a matter of example, this transfer is equivalent to about 50% of the entire funding of the fire department. So imagine for a second if we didn't have that transfer. We would have to have made significant cuts during the Great Recession, but certainly the city of Los Angeles would not have grown the way it has in terms of service delivery if it weren't for the participation of the rate base in the future of the city. But I do believe, colleagues, that we need to have a more in-depth conversation about the transfer. I want to thank Council President Wesson in chairing the meetings around reform because I think it does beg a question as to how much it is that we want to invest in the utility and how much it is that we should continue to share with the ratepayer in the form of this dividend. But in today's action, I believe that this is um, absolutely appropriate. It's pro forma. It's something that we've been doing since 1925, and I urge an I vote. Great. Thank you very much. Seeing no other speakers on the queue, we'll go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. That's approved. Thank you very much. And it'll be uh, sent forth with, without objection. That'll be the order. All right. Let's go ahead and go over to item 36 called special by cards. Uh, Mr. Previn, item 36, followed by John Walsh. Both of you can come on up. Mr. Walsh, if you're in the room, come on up. Don't yell from council chambers, just come on up. Okay, let's not uh, bother Thank anybody. Thank you, sir. It's Eric Previn from CD2 for one minute. Once again, if this thing could be set for 60 seconds, we could avoid the game you like to play. Blocking Stick people. to the item, please. I am, sir. Put 60 seconds on the clock. Thank you. 36. This is our famous 
our favorite uh, communication from the mayor for the day. We've got one senior project coordinator for the LAFD um, from the civil service. We're exempting it, I think, from the civil service provision. So this is senior, um, as I just said, project coordinator. We also have at item 37, for the record, is fire statistical manager, also for the LFD, similar kind of exemption. Don't worry about it. I'm not off point. Well, my point on 36 is this. We should be hiring women. Okay, this is a, every year we trot out the one or two gals at the LAFD. We need to be hiring women. We have talented, strong, powerful women. If we're going to agree to an exemption, these, both of these jobs, which are sort of senior, ought to be filled by women. I think uh, Council Member Martinez is going to burst into song. Thank you. John Walsh, HollywoodHighlands.org. Let me say what exemption means. Exemption means they don't have to have any qualifications to get the job other than maybe they suck the mayor's cock. Okay? That's what we're talking Mr. about. Mr. Walsh. That's how Glenn Dake got his job. Mr. Walsh. Now, let me tell you, anytime you think that anything I say, you arrest me and then we'll go to court. One senior project coordinator for the FD. And uh, the next one is uh, civil service. No civil service permission. Now, in New York City, in Chicago, they have hundreds of these jobs, hundreds of them. And I just want you to know that the people at the fire department, besides being racist and sexist, aren't qualified for their goddamn jobs. And when something go gets on fire, it'll, I'm telling you, what scumbags. Let's make sure people are qualified at the fire department, not friends of, the, of our gay mayor. All right. Thank you very much. Seeing no other cards, we'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 14 Mr. Eyes. Walsh, you're disrupting this meeting. Please have a seat. And I uh, wanted to let who here is the first time they're visiting City Hall? Any hands? All right. So I wanted to let you all know about the First Amendment that you just witnessed. And with that, you're actually able to address and readdress a government body uh, and under the Brown Act and under judicial rulings, you can say almost, almost anything you like, as you just witnessed. And so um, oftentimes, that is the beauty of representation by the public, um, and then sometimes uh, n not so much. But in any event, it is on display uh, often here, and so I wanted to um, just afford you that opportunity to witness that unfortunately sometimes and so with that I'd like to turn it over to a special presentation to council member Gilbert Cedillo. Mr. President thanks for for uh, informing us of that abuse of the First Amendment that there are those who have given their lives and committed their lives so that we could share in the freedoms that uh, come from the First Amendment and then there there are those who simply don't appreciate it, abuse it, belittle it, and uh, leave us here wondering why, why, why didn't they go to Loyola High School. So with that, my dear colleagues, let me tell you, you know, uh, I like to talk a lot about my uh, upbringing here as an Angelino, and I went to a great public school, uh, Roosevelt High School. But one of the things for m many of the Mexican-American families uh, growing up was that their parents always wanted them to go to the local Catholic school. And there are many great Catholic schools in Los Angeles, but uh, I think the oldest, and arguably the best, uh, and I say that today, uh, is Loyola High School. And I'm very proud to represent Loyola High School. It is an extraordinary, extraordinary high school. Uh, we have a great relationship with our office. Uh, we spend a lot of time working with them, and they are a pillar and an anchor of our community. And they are a school that's located in the first district, but they are a school that serves and services the entire city. And they have a very, very spectacular alumni uh, including uh, some members of the city family here. And so it's a great honor to talk today about Loyola and the young men that it's preparing for leadership, people who will lead our city, who will do it with deference and with respect. 
Uh, we're, today we're here to honor the cross country team of Loyola High School and they've been under the direction of Dr. Lalo Diaz in his 39th year. Uh, I think he's pretty committed to this. In his 39th year, he celebrates his sixth state title uh, in the last 12 sessions. Uh, let's bring them up. <laughs> or else I'm going to start talking about the year I ran cross country. <laughs> oh man, you guys can run all day, can't you? <laughs> You're running good. I'm gonna tell you, there's nothing like being a teenager and running cross country. There's no limit. There's no limit to how far you can run, but I think the great thing about uh, Coach Diaz is that there's no limit to how far they're gonna go in life. Coach. Thank you so much, <laughs> thank you, pleasure. Real pleasure, real honor. Let me introduce to you the incredible uh, coach and then the assistant coaches, but uh, uh, Coach, I'll let you do that. Thank you so much. Raul Diaz. On behalf of Loyola High School, and certainly welcoming Salesian High School as well, uh, We'd like to say thank you on behalf of the student body, the administration. We have our athletic director with us, Mr. Chris O'Donnell, coaches Wayne Brandt, Dr. Phil, Phil Bland, who practices out of Good Samaritan Hospital, Nikki DePaolo, Dr. Frank Mesa, longtime Kaiser physician, Dr. Frank Mesa, and this opportunity would be, would be missed if I didn't mention how proud we are to run in the streets of Los Angeles and know that we, we have that at our, as our training grounds. People very much, very often ask, how is it that you prepare for, for championship season when you're, you're downtown LA virtually at the corner of Venice and Vermont? But thanks to the fact that we have Elysian Park that we have Debs Park, that we have Griffith Park, and it is with tremendous gratitude that we say thank you to the city of Los Angeles for maintaining those facilities for us to, to be able to train properly. Thank you so much. 